It's Dark Emden time. Welcome back to another video of me reviewing the latest event in Azure Lane. And today that event is Light of Martyrium. This is a brand new French event for the Chinese anniversary that brings us two new URs. Apologies I couldn't get to the data mine before the server maintenance was over, but this video should still go live within 24 hours of launching the event. This was partially due to the abnormal launch of an event on a Tuesday rather than a Thursday. So that also means that the time I would be doing the data mine on Wednesday night, I now have free to stream the event. So I hope you guys can join me on that stream. Now it's typically at this time of the video where I go through the updates that come with the maintenance. However, there were so many things released during the seventh anniversary live stream. In order to save time on this video, I'm going to go with only updates related to this specific event. If you missed the live stream, I have an archive of it on my channel. And I also plan to be releasing with this video another video that summarizes is the seventh anniversary live stream and gives a roadmap for Azure Lane in 2024. There's a lot going on, so be on the lookout for that video as well. Make sure you watch that one too, because I'm basically breaking this into two different parts just to save time on this video. The only thing I'll point out is that if you don't like the new UI changes, you can go into settings and change them back to the old version. So with that, let's get into this event. We get a couple of mini events, including a summer invitation and a double XP event, as well as a mini game. Also, there'll be a Wishing Well campaign during this event. As with normal events, we will be getting a dorm theme and a bunch of new skins, one for each of the new ships that we are getting. However, if you don't see all the skins that you saw on the live stream, that's because they will be coming in installments, so wait a week or two and more skins will be coming later, especially those O skins that are coming, but for now, we just have this base set of eight skins. The map on this one's actually pretty good. Most players are going to want to grind in D2 once they get their droppable ships. However, D1 is also a good map, and C2, C3, and D3 are all good for very new players as well. Also, we are getting a retrofit today, so that is what I'm going to start off talking about here. Colorado finally becomes a gold ship. Her retrofit gives her an extra 30 firepower as well as over 200 HP. Her barrage skill is increased from 40% chance of proccing to 70% chance of proccing. Also, it now procs the first time that a ship in your main fleet drops below 50% HP. She also picks up a second skill that increases her firepower by 12% and anti-air by 12%. She also increases her firepower by another 12% for a 24% total boost, as well as her hit stat by 12% if she has another battleship in her fleet. And once per battle per ship, when another battleship in your fleet falls below 40% HP, she deploys a barrier around that ship that can negate up to 15% of her max HP and damage and increases that ship's firepower by 10%. All these are really good additions and this ship got boosted a lot, but still she's very squishy and doesn't keep track with, you know, what's been released lately, but a very nice retrofit for Colorado. So let's move on to a ship that is released lately, the newest UR battleship. This is a ship from Free France, Alsace. She is going to be in the Gotcha with the Pity. Stat-wise, she has the lowest HP of any Gotcha UR battleship. No, we're not counting War Spite Retrofit. She does have the highest evasion of any UR battleship, though, although that's somewhat offset by her below average luck. Firepower-wise, she looks good. She's right in between New Jersey and Soyuz. Although her main gun efficiency is slightly lower than her competition at 145%. But that might not matter because she she has a preloaded salvo. That is not uncommon for the French. They typically have a preloaded salvo. However, they usually give up one of their shots to get that. Usually they shoot two instead of three, but one is preloaded. However, Alsace is going to shoot three and have a preloaded. So she has no downside to that preloaded. So she looks really good for her stat. She's a little bit squishy, but she should make up for that by being able to hit very fast with a preloaded salvo. Let's move on to skill number one. Skill number one reads, when the ship fires her main guns, execute a judgment descent upon one enemy. That enemy takes 12% more damage for 10 seconds, and you trigger a special barrage that scales on the skill's level, and it inflicts special burn for 30 seconds to all enemies hit by this barrage guaranteed. Alsace also has a cross-fleet barrage because this skill says if she's afloat, the other fleet is going to trigger this skill once 20 seconds into the battle. That's actually really 
really good timing for any of your carriers because there will be a 12% more damage taken for 10 seconds and that 20 to 30 seconds is usually when most big carriers are going to be launching. Looking at the stats of this barrage, I anticipate this cross fleet to be a great tool in your toolbox for PvE content. Skill number two, she gets a flat plus 15% boost to her firepower. That's pretty common with these UR battleships. Also, when her secondary gun or any French Vanguard ship's main gun hits an enemy, you obtain a Wrath of Judgment stack. After 12 stacks, you enhance her first skill. Number one, damage taken by the debuff inflicted lasts for the whole battle instead of 10 seconds. And number two, every time that you fire the barrage from her first skill, it is going to target an unmarked enemy before it targets the same enemy again. And remember that barrage has priority aim, which is amazing. This skill's interesting because 12 stacks is enough where her by herself might not be able to get there before her second salvo. So this skill somewhat encourages you to have a French Vanguard ship in your fleet. Luckily, Brest is pretty good and we have a couple of new Vanguard fleet ships that are coming with this event too, so I anticipate that to be good. Of course, that's probably not something you're going to want to do in PvP, so you might have to give up on that, but this is a pretty good buff, but not something that's required for her to function. Her final skill reads that all French ships get plus 8% crit rate. This also includes all the ships in the cross fleet, which is very interesting. This is a new type of skill, but basically she has a cross fleet buff coming from here. It's actually a very nice buff, but it's not going to make or break you running a French ship, but it's just like a nice to have. It also buffs herself too, so that's cool. Also, if any ship falls below 30% HP in her fleet, she triggers a special barrage that heals that ship for 3% max HP for every bullet landed, max five heal instances. This procs once per battle. So theoretically, that is 15% heal. This barrage is actually an airplane barrage. It has like a carpet bomber thing going on. And there are plenty of ways that you're going to hit five heals here. There's a lot of things that will hit. It doesn't deal a lot of damage, but you're very likely to get the full 15% heal based on this barrage. Finally, another thing to note that's new about Al over any other battleship is that she can store battleship salvos. This is how CVs work. Like CVs can store multiple airstrikes, whereas BBs cannot store them. However, she can store them. This is not going to matter in PvP or any auto format. However, if you are in a manual mode, you can actually store multiple salvos and kind of launch them at a specific time. This could be very useful against specific bosses and challenge modes, but it's, it's just kind of unique. And it's very nice on a ship that has a pre loaded, meaning you can save your preloaded until later. You don't have to use it at the beginning and lose it. She can just store it until, you know, you want it. So anyway, that's really cool for manual players. That's nice because the French faction tends to, you know, cater to manual players in a lot of ways. So that's pretty cool. Overall, I really, really like the design of this ship for multiple reasons. I think it's on theme with the French. It has a preloaded. It has, you know, no downside of what the early French ships had. It definitely feels somewhat glass cannony because it does have less EHP than a lot of other UR battleships but it makes up for that by going early. It does a ton of damage in terms of like the way that its DPS is catering out. It looks very good. The barrages look very powerful. It doesn't have any freezes or anything like that but it does have basically a 12% damage boost and theoretically you should be able to very quickly get that to be permanent for the rest of the battle and that should be coming at every time that she fires her main guns. There's a lot of things going on here. She has a lot of generic parts to her where she can heal basically anybody. She can use her cross fleets very nicely, but she also has things that are nice for the French faction. She gives that crit rate. She also, you know, benefits if you have French ships in the Vanguard giving extra main gun shots. I really like to design of this ship. I'm not saying like it's, you know, broken or anything like that. Like it's the best you are. I still think Musashi is pretty powerful. I still think Soyuz is probably more powerful than Alsace barely, but I think that this provides provides a lot of utility. I think it's different than the other ones. I think it's on theme and I really like the design of this and I do think it gets slotted into a lot of different boss battles and kind of 
to be determined on the PvP scene. I think because of Laffy 2, preloadeds are just not what they used to be. She just, you know, warped the meta in such a way, and I don't think this particular ship is good at dealing with Laffy 2, which is kind of what makes the PvP meta go forward right now. But maybe in the future, if that ever changes, she could see some play there as well. I, I just really like this ship. I think it's great, and it looks like a must pick up for me i mean it just it provides so much utility and it's really good like if you don't have every ur battleship it's still probably i would say depending on what you're doing right soyuz is just really good for that aoe freeze and bismarck is good for the suction and and then you have musashi that has the lightning armor break things like that but alsace is pretty good in her own right i almost like want to say that she's better than vanguard in doing her role of kind of giving that extra damage buff i really like alsace i think she's very powerful all right well all those requesting a French event got their dream because they got two URs in this event. Free France got the last UR, so this UR goes to Vichy France. This is a destroyer, Mogador, who will be available basically in the shop. You can get her points through the event and then buy a voucher for her. So she's kind of a free UR, so to speak. Kind of like how Laffy 2 was. The first thing that stands out to me stat-wise is her speed of 51 puts her faster or at least the same speed as every other other ship that's not French. Another thing I really like to see on her is that she has a main gun plus one, and that sits on 130% efficiency, which doesn't seem that high for destroyers that don't have a main gun plus one, but for destroyers with a main gun plus one, that is pretty high. Her torpedo stat is a little low, and the rest of her stats kind of chalk up to what a UR destroyer looks like, similar to Shimikaze or Yudachi Retrofit. All right, let's move on to the skills. Skill number one, every 12 seconds, she triggers a slash attack against Against a random enemy that prioritizes elites and it applies a 1.5 second freeze to the enemy that it hits. Then it lunges forward and stabs that enemy and this ship takes 80% less ramming damage during this attack. Morgador then freezes herself for one second in the position. This stab has a 100% crit rate if the ship is not on fire. Also it inflicts an open wound on the enemy hit by the slash attack for 12 seconds. Enemies with this open wound takes 6% more damage from torpedoes, submarine torpedoes, and torpedo bombers. Man, is this a unique skill, and it kind of fits with her huge stab scythe that she has in her artwork. I still don't have, I can't wrap my head around this as well as I think. There is no, like, lunge range that I see in here, and it kind of almost is, like, ramming into it. Like, we're kind of going glowworm meta here. There's a 100% crit rate, so that's neat. I, I'm very interested in how this works. She's basically doing ram damage as part of this. I don't even know, does the whole Vanguard jump with her? Is the slash attack able to destroy torpedoes and shells like some slash attacks? What is the range? She's basically freezing herself. So she's like stunning herself to do this. There are so many questions about this that when this ship is available for people to have, I am so interested in how this works because this on paper doesn't seem amazing. It just seems weird, but then I could be totally missing something where it's like, oh, I can just teleport my whole Vanguard. It all moves together to another part in the screen, wherever the enemy is. I freeze into it and I basically just do crash damage into it. I don't know. It's weird to me also that we're like kind of focusing on torpedoes, given that's not what she's primarily known for. But, you know, if you have other torpedo ships with her, that's going to be fine. It's funny that they have this particular instance of torpedoes does all instances of torpedoes, including subs and airplanes. Why that is, I don't know. But most of the time you only have regular torpedoes, but this one applies to all. So anyway, very weird skill. I'm very interested to see how this works in the wild. I'm a little bit skeptical of how good this will be, but, you know, we'll see. Let's go on to skill number two. If this ship is equipped with any Iris Libre equipment, that should be very easy. There are a lot of good French destroyer guns, and I believe we're getting a new French destroyer gun during this event as well, so that should be really easy to get for her. She also gains firepower equal to this ship's evasion, base stats and equipment only. So, interesting. So you can basically equip her with an Iris Libre destroyer gun and then give her a bunch of evasion, which she will like. She typically is going to want HP over evasion, but you could give her evasion and then she's going to get fire
firepower boosts off of that. So that's really neat. Also, she gets a self plus 6% evasion rate on top of all that evasion. So this is really going to help her EHP. So that's really cool. Finally, when this ship takes damage, if the damage source has less speed than this ship, which we just talked about is pretty much everybody, not everybody in the game, but pretty much anybody that you're going to run into. She's very fast. Anyway, if they have less speed, she gains a barrier equal to 20% of the damage received. And there's a three second cooldown between activations and it does not stack. Okay, well, let me finish this. If the barrier breaks, she fires her main gun again and heals for 10 HP, not 10%, 10 HP. Okay, well, that is minuscule, absolutely minuscule. I don't know why the heal even matters at that point. That's kind of like almost insulting. And this is also another thing is it's 20% of damage received. So it's going to be any instance of damage. Let's say you take like 100 damage, you're going to get a shield that has 20 damage and then it's going to die and give you 10 HP. That is a 30 HP swing. That is nothing. And you're like, oh, well, it could be all of them. Well, it has a three second cooldown and it doesn't stack. So if you do the three damage, if you do the 100 damage and then you take a thousand damage, it's, you know, you're on cooldown from the first instance. Honestly, this shield is not very good. I mean, I guess it's technically a barrier over shield, which is better, but I'm not sure how much I like that. I mean, it will help her EHP, but I think it's one of the worse barriers that she could have had. Uh, there are definitely better ones that other ships have, but I do like the evasion rate boost. I do like the fact that we can spec into evasion and get firepower in the back end of that. And it is kind of gimmicky to be like, hey, you're slower than me. I get to get a barrier. I don't know. I feel like it could be better. There is technically a heal. There is technically a barrier. There's a technically evasion rate. So this skill is all about survivability and it's technically doing that, but it uh, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. Damage received is definitely a very big asterisk there because like you can basically get blocked out of a good barrier by like a diddly like six damage shell that's stray from a barrage and then you have a three second cooldown. Now three seconds is not terrible. You do get it back pretty quick but just gotta be careful there but it is potentially good against larger damage but you gotta be careful about that too because it's damage received so you have to take the instance of damage first so a big amount of damage that gives you a big barrier I mean she only has 2300 HP so it's not like she has a big tank to go off of and a lot of the time she's going to be dodging stuff like with the high evasion so eh, i don't like that barrier very much anyway let's move on to skill number three she gets plus 10 percent hit stat that's cool it's just base and flat cool also every 12 seconds she triggers a sonar sweep that reveals all enemy subs for eight seconds so that actually pairs up with the the first skill so every 12 seconds not only you're going to get the big slash and lunge and stab thing but you're also going to get a sonar scan so theoretically you can reveal a sub and then go stab them which is actually gonna be really useful i think for world 15 you don't have to get an extra hedgehog you know you can use her that way so that's that's actually kind of nice it's definitely pve oriented specifically like late game specific maps also all burns on herself are reduced by six seconds duration i'm glad that exists just because a lot of these skills uh, above were just like it only works if she is not on fire and you're just like why do i have to not be on fire to do what i want Want to do that kind of sucks right if you're playing in pvp and this becomes if this were ever to be really good because the slash you just like run some he in your you know vanguard and you're like oh i'm gonna put you on fire and you can't you can't do the the crit or whatever i don't know so i guess whatever so she's gonna burn less that's nice if this ship is not on fire every time this ship's main gun shells hit an enemy with an open wound any burn or any flood effect a hundred percent chance to fire an additional main gun round with a two second cooldown so she has a main gun plus one and then she also has this skill basically if she's not on fire and she hits somebody with an open wound or burn or flood she gets to have another shot so great and i believe that will count towards her all-out assault which that's her final skill every 16 she fires however her her max limit break is the half the all-out assault so theoretically she only has to fire eight times to trigger her all-out assault and then also she has a main gun plus one so that should be much faster and then additionally this skill 
skill will be able to proc more. She basically gets kind of like a main gun plus two because of this if she's not on fire and she's, uh, you know, hitting somebody with an open wound or some sort of status effect. So she should be spamming this all at assault a lot, although it's not particularly the most powerful all out assault. It doesn't have any torpedoes. It's a uh, destroyer all out assault. So I wouldn't say it's like something that you need to totally go for. It's just something that's going to happen a lot if you just do your normal thing. So this is interesting. I think this ship definitely pairs with Alsace really nicely in a couple of ways, and that's primarily making sure that you are getting your Wrath of Judgment stacks on Alsace because she is just going to totally throw a bunch of main gun shots downrange. I do think that stab effect has a lot of potential to be amazing. It could be terrible. It It's all going to be how that directly works and functions, but it's definitely interesting. You're like skewering somebody and you're like, all right, we're just going to skewer you and freeze everybody. So I don't know. It's interesting. I definitely like this ship, but I, I think Alsace is more interesting to me at the moment. All right, let's move on to the next ship. This is the SR Baron Meta. So she gets an upgrade in her rarity. She's also going to be available in the shop and she is a carrier. The live stream and the announcement on Twitter called her a light carrier for some reason. So interestingly enough. So stat wise, I see a lot of changes from the original Baron. She gets a significant increase in her aviation stat. She gives up her torpedo stat, which is such a gimmick with the original Baron, but she does keep her firepower. She loses out on a ton of EHP with a huge loss in her evasion and some loss in the HP. However, she's going to see a huge increase in her efficiencies in the regular plane slots for fighters and torpedo bombers, but also most importantly, that dive bomber slot so she doesn't have to equip that gun. She can equip an extra set of planes to give her eight planes and that those last two planes are not like I think it was like 55% or something efficiency on her base so now it's 100 so that's really good so I would say she's definitely more offensive she gives up some of her EHP to get a lot more DPS at least in her base so let's look at skills skill number one she gets plus 15% aviation and plus 15% firepower also five seconds after the ship launches an airstrike there's a 70% chance to trigger an additional aerial and shell barrage if this barrage fails to trigger, the next one is guaranteed. So basically every two airstrikes, you're guaranteed to have an aerial strike and you're probably going to be more likely than that because it's going to be 70% chance and then 100 if it fails or 70 and 70. So you're actually pretty good there. The barrage actually looks pretty good if you launch it with three planes. So I assume that there's going to be some sort of enhancement that comes at a later skill because there are multiple ways that this barrage comes out but it's actually not a bad barrage. Anyway, skill number two. At the start of the battle, the detection gauge max value goes up. Not very useful, but sure. Okay. Every two enemies Baron Meta kills heal this ship 2% of her max HP, and this procs a max of five times per battle. So if she kills 10 enemies, she can get a max of 10% heal. Cool. Every four ships that Baron Meta kills, or every 30 seconds after the battle starts, generate a storm area that slows the enemy's speed. It lasts for five seconds, and it has a max proc of three times per battle. So 30 seconds, a minute, and 130, but it can happen earlier if you're killing ships faster. The range on this is not really known, but that's interesting. When her HP drops below 40%, you clear the detection gauge and heals herself 25% max HP that procs once per battle. So she has a ton of heals. She can heal herself 10% by just killing 10 enemies, and then she heals another 25% by just going below 40%, and she clears the detection gauge on that too so she gets to go be hidden again and her detection gauge is higher than the rest so it will be harder to reveal her each time so anyway there's a lot of survivability here with heals hopefully you shouldn't be having your back line take so many hits but if for some reason you do she is going to be healing it it's only healing herself though so it's not like a great healer it's just like i don't know it's like you're healing a ship that's not in the brunt of the force it's not healing the things that are taking most of the hits and you know 
you're giving up a lot of damage to run her. But okay, let's look at the last skill. I guess there's two skills because that it, you know every meta ship has that op size skill that uh, you know allows it to deal extra damage against you know bosses. But the last real skill or unique skill will be she gets a plus 10% damage dealt, and the first airstrike load time is reduced by 20% time. So those are both amazing. Like that, those are two amazing sentences, right? You get to deal extra damage and you get to reduce the first airstrike. So that's very neat. Also, she triggers special effects depending on the equipment of slot three. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. When it has a light cruiser gun equipped, it enhances the range by 30% so she can fire pretty good here like this can get good shot you know usually those ranges are like 60 to 70 so 30 percent of that you can you can go pretty far actually that will be really good depending on like your map or what you're trying to do but the range will be far it also enhances the first skill shell barrage and launches a special barrage every 10 seconds this barrage has priority aim and has he so it can burn so that's cool if she has the dive bomber instead the first airstrike low time is automatically reduced by 30%, so that on top of the already 20% means a 50% cooldown reduction for the first airstrike, and it enhances the first skill's aerial barrage, which is what we saw a little bit earlier, so the aerial barrage is going to be better, and it's going to be a reduction of the cooldown for the first one. You're giving up the extra range from the gun, and you're giving up an extra shell barrage, so, you know, you are giving up a little bit more than I would have thought, but you're probably going to want a dive bomber on her. I think, you know, she's a carrier, her main damage dealing stat is aviation stat you're gonna want that cooldown reduction so you're probably gonna put a dive bomber on her this ship is interesting i think they like there's a lot of text on here there's a lot of things going on with this ship yeah i would say this is definitely a lot better than the original baron and yeah, this will be interesting. So this one you can pick up in the shop as well. I believe this will be the low percentage gotcha as well. So this should be something you should be able to get as well. There's a lot of new meta ships coming out these days, but this one's pretty decent. I, I think it's very squishy, but it, it heals like crazy. So maybe that'll be fine. I don't know. It's definitely PVE only. All right, the final SR ship. And this one is just straight from the gotcha. It's going to be a free French ship. It is a heavy cruiser. And I'm looking at the stats right here. Uh-oh, it is a... A torpedo heavy cruiser of course it has a main gun plus one because most heavy cruisers do but it does have the torpedoes so that's a struggle it doesn't really have a good torpedo stat to boot i would say it's starting to look a lot like a takao but it actually has significantly more health so that's helpful but overall stat wise i think we're starting off on a bad foot so let's see if we get anything in the skills that turn this around skill number one at the start of the battle she summons six swords of judgment that rotate around her and each sword can block up to seven shells so she has a bunch of these rotating swords that can block things. When any ship in the fleet falls under 50% HP, she fires a special barrage that triggers once per battle. If there's another French ship in the fleet, you enhance the barrage with slashes. Ooh, that's interesting. Also, her swords of judgment deal damage to things that come in contact with them by 100 HP with each contact, similar to how Rune Yu works. All right, so this ship has a chance with the slashes. Skill number two, at the start of the battle she enters allegro state and while she's in this state she gets to deal an extra plus 15 percent damage dealt okay i mean do we ever leave this state like interesting i guess we'll keep reading every 20 seconds if a sword of judgment still exists consume all the swords and fire a special barrage this barrage has the damage dealt based on the number of swords that you're consuming here so more swords more damage change to the allegro state so you basically stay you get the Allegro state every 20 seconds when you consume. If no swords exist, you change to the Lento state. And while you're in the Lento state, your damage taken is reduced by 15%. So it's not like terrible, but you are losing the damage. So interestingly enough, basically you start in Allegro, which is extra damage. Every 20 seconds, you consume swords and go into Allegro again to get extra damage dealt. If you don't have any swords left at this time, you're going to get basically a damage debuff, the damage taken debuff buff so it's actually pretty good it'll allow you to survive if you're struggling you do lose the damage buff but that's honestly that seems pretty good also five seconds after this check you resummon all of the swords which is you know six of them or so yeah you summon six of them so that's not too bad so every 20 seconds 
you start the battle with the six swords and then you wait and then at 25 seconds you'll get the swords back and and you know at 45 seconds you'll get the swords back so that's all pretty good and of course if you don't use the swords you get to use them into a barrage plus a damaged belt boof and if you are using the swords you you know will get extra survivability i like that and then she has an all-out assault honestly this ship is pretty cool i mean it's an sr it's only got two skills so it's not going to compete against the two urs that we have coming today but i do kind of like it the slash is interesting the shields are interesting i don't think it's going to be particularly super meta unless those like swords of judgment are huge and spin around like at crazy speeds but even then i think she's going to struggle just because she's a torpedo heavy cruiser she's not going to be dealing a lot of damage i mean her barrage is good but like it's focused on consuming a bunch of swords in reality you're probably not going to be able to keep all of those swords up so i don't know this ship is interesting uh, I like kind of the design, but I, you know, it's a torpedo heavy cruiser and it, it needs some help. All right, moving on. We're moving on to the final ship in the gotcha. It is an elite destroyer. It is part of Vichy France. It is Fleuré. It is got elite destroyer stats. I mean, 100 firepower and 1700 health. That's pretty low. The torpedo stat's not terrible though. Although if we look at her efficiency, she has a higher destroyer gun efficiency than torpedo efficiency. So not a good sign there. She does get the auxiliary boost for stats but sure anyway let's move on to skill skill number one self main gun and torpedo weapon efficiency plus 20 percent interesting that that gets put in a skill and they couldn't just put it as part of the stats but sure okay it's a skill so that makes her look better at least up there three seconds after the battle starts and every 20 seconds after that select a random enemy this ship deals plus 30 percent more damage against that enemy's armor type for 10 seconds that's interesting so not only will be towards that specific enemy but if they're all heavy armor for example you'll get that boost against all of them if there is another lee hardy class ship in the fleet so like her class basically her and the other ship are going to get it so that boost is going to apply to another ship i mean it's 30 percent damage boost is amazing except it comes from a you know minuscule destroyer with like 100 firepower and i mean i guess it has some torp stat okay it's a cool skill but it's on a terrible ship and it's gonna need to scale off of that skill number two her evasion goes up by by plus 20%. Cool. Okay. If a main fleet contains a battlecruiser or a battleship, this ship and all battlecruisers and battleships in the main fleet take 10% less damage. So she's actually buffing battlecruisers and battleships. That's kind of interesting. So probably still not worth it. There's not a lot of reasons why we'd want them to take 10% less damage. PvP would be one of those reasons, but this ship's not worth like that. So I don't know. I mean, it's collection ship. It's a little bit better than collection only. I could see some places where you use it, but those are going to be because you like the ship more than anything. I don't think there's, I, I don't know. That that second skill is kind of useful in, in some very specific instances if you want to goof around, but not really good. We're going to say it's mostly collection only, but not collection only. Mostly collection would be right. Finally, we have the last Elite Destroyer. This is another Vici France ship, Epe. You can get this in the accumulation rewards for points. Stat-wise, it's pretty bad. It's very similar to Fleure, almost identical, but I mean, obviously, they're, you know, sister but anyway skill number one this ship deals plus 15 percent damage versus destroyers so interestingly enough if you put her with her sister you get the plus 30 percent damage from her sister if it picks like a destroyer and that destroyer is light armor and all the other destroyers are light armor that's kind of interesting cool also every eight main gun attacks she gets her speed reduced by 10 percent okay and her firepower torpedo stat and hit stat go up by 30 percent for four seconds so she just kind of like slows down slightly and then gets a boost. Honestly, though, their speeds for being French destroyers are not that good. They're like 42. That's like basic standard. So they're not even that fast. But sure, we're going to reduce their speed. Skill number two, 50% chance on taking damage to take 20% less damage for 10 seconds. So that's actually a good skill. That could actually lead to some survivability. That skill on the other ship would have been really useful. I feel like if these two ships got combined into one, you would actually maybe have a fun 10 ship anyway if there are other uh lee hardy class ships basically the sister that we just talked about a random one and the ship can both individually trigger this minus damage taken and then every 20 seconds after the battle starts 70 percent chance to fire a barrage enemies hit by the barrage are slowed by 10 percent for 10 seconds so she has a slow that's cool 10 percent is going to be barely noticeable but sure we'll be happy about that
that. It's also not guaranteed, so whatever. But let's talk about the fact that we can um, basically give this skill to her sister. So that's cool. We talked about the two ships to combine could be good. Unfortunately, you need to have two ships to get all the skills together. But... Uh, you don't want to waste two slots. I don't know. They're fun together. This could be something you could totally use for, for memes. But anyway, that's those. And wow. Okay, that took a long time to get through these ships. But we have some gear to get through. I believe only two. So let's talk about gear now. First up, we have a French UR destroyer gun. The 138.6 millimeter MLE 1934. Four, and this is a UR, so we get actually a good buff stat here. 55 firepower stat buff is the highest stat buff of any destroyer gun. So that's super useful if you want to put it on an American destroyer that has to use a destroyer gun or just any, you know, destroyer that really needs some firepower stats. This can really make a difference. Damage wise, it looks pretty good. 17 by 2 by 3 is not bad by any means, but that fire rate is actually pretty fast for that amount of damage. And then when you couple that with the fact it has a good firepower boost that's good maybe not for like normal ammo but when we're taking into account that it's ap ammo which has piercing that's pretty good it also has good modifiers those modifiers are a little bit better than the base ap the only really downside that i see right here is going to be that effective range the damage modifier is also a little bit you know it's not amazing it's 100 130 at plus 13 but the effective range being 60 is a little light a lot of the destroyer guns we want to use on the backliners like new jersey are going to have ranges at 65 or 70 so it's a little light there if you're going to put it on a destroyer or something like that or something in the front line that's not going to make a difference because they're going to be able to fire but if you are going to put it in the back line that is a little bit short uh, which is unfortunate because you want to put that plus 55 firepower on the back line like that's definitely something you want I don't know if it's necessarily best in slot but it's pretty close because it does a lot of good damage but it is slower than the other UR destroyer gun that we have so you do got to be careful about that, uh, depending on whether or not you're trying to go for all-out assaults or not. But it should have a little bit more DPS when you factor in the fact that it has the firepower boost on it. And AP piercing is very nice and definitely helpful if you have to go against heavy armor. So you're only going to be able to get one of these from the shop. So... I guess you're not gonna be able to get like a whole fleet of them so you are gonna have to use other destroyer guns but this is definitely a good one and this is a must pick up uh, in the shop uh, I don't know if it's more important to pick up or not than Mogador but it's it's definitely a big thing that you definitely want to pick up and do not want to miss all right moving on we get a new torps the 550 millimeter torps and this is a very funky looking iris pair of torps you can kind of see it's a three and two pair in the image but that's actually how it fires so it fires Fires the first wave with the 30% spread or 30 degree spread with two torpedoes and then it fires the second wave with a 60 degree spread with three torpedoes 0.2 seconds later that delay is very short but it is interesting so you're going to basically fire five torpedoes but they're going to be kind of more centered right you're not going to spread them out like a huge fan where the last two kind of just go off the screen you're going to have them more centered which is actually kind of good theoretically it's good and if we're looking at the raw damage here it's actually really good that's very good damage uh, especially since the fact that i'm anticipating that the uh, effectiveness of the expected value of those torpedoes actually hitting is going to be high higher than a typical five torpedo set. So that could be really good. It is slow, you know, 29 second fire rate, a little bit slow, but not enough to like make it unusable. So it's really going to come down to what the effectiveness of this new type of spread where we fire two and then three. And when we logged into the game today and we have images, it's just it looks goofy and it looks bugged. I'm pretty sure it's bugged on Harbin where it, it's literally firing like nine torpedoes. And that's not nine torpedoes because of Harbin's skill. It's nine for each wave of Harbin's skill. I don't know. So it looks bugged. I'm not sure even what it is. But theoretically, this is a good torpedo set. I would definitely not pass on this because theoretically, it could be very good depending on the effectiveness of those, you know, that new type of spread. It almost kind of is going to work like a T-Torps in that way. And it does damage, I think, greater than T-Torps, uh, especially if you have, like, double preloaded Lake Shimikaze. That would be super useful here. They aren't homing, though, so that might not be worth it, especially if you're, like, in PvP trying to snipe a backliner. Although you can give them homing with, you know, a black torpedo auxiliary or, or something like that. So it's not the end of the world. This is an interesting one. I would not lose it, especially with some of these bugs. I'm interested to see what the patches do and then how it looks after patches. But just to be safe, I would not pass on 
on this one. And yeah. All right, that's the event. This video ended up dragging for a ton of time and we didn't even talk about a bunch of the changes that came from the live stream, the UI updates or any of that stuff that I just couldn't fit into this. There were so many of them and there's more coming. We had a bunch today, but we have a bunch coming next week and I believe another set the week after that. And then there was a couple on their plan that, you know, they didn't give a timeline, but theoretically are in development. So there's like a lot of things coming down. I plan on making a separate video related to that. And yeah, I'll be streaming this event. So if you want to watch me do gotcha polls and pull my hair out like last time or go through the event and kind of archive the thing, we're going to be doing that depending on this video when it comes out tomorrow or tonight, but it's going to be Wednesday evening US time. And yeah, I mean, so far I really like it. I think Alsace is definitely a huge target to pick up. She's probably the best ship in this event. Morgador is interesting, certainly unique and probably worth picking up, although probably not as busted as Laffy 2 was with the first ship to do that. And I think pretty much the rest of the ships are, you know, as you need them. Baron Meta and Brennus do enough to get C play if you need them, but they aren't going to be taking up a best in slot. Even in the French faction, there are better options. So they're really, if you enjoy them, the skins look very spicy, that's for certain. But I think overall, the event's going to be pretty good. We got two gears that are like bordering on best in slot. Uh, one of them is kind of bugged at the moment. And the other one, it really depends on how how you value range versus, you know, stat boosting, but it's definitely up there. So you need to get both of those. And I believe it's going to be a three week event or it's even like longer in that way because it started on Tuesday. So you have plenty of time to get this all done. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy these. If you did, leave it a like. You can subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and uh, be on the lookout for more streams and content like this in the future. Take care, guys. And until next time.